Astral Explorer backers. Um, this is Anna here. Um, I am the one of the writers and the web designer and overall art person at Headless Hydra Press. Um, first of all, thank you so much for your support in this campaign. We really, really appreciate it. And as a way to say thank you, and also because we've never done Roll20 image, images before, um, I thought it would be a good thing to just make a little video just walking people through the basics of how to actually use these um, Hexplorer tile images in Roll20. Um, now I'm assuming that most people who uh, backed at this level probably already have some familiarity with Roll20, um, but I just thought there might be some people who don't, and so I'm going to walk you through some of the basics here. If you're already an advanced user, you don't necessarily have to watch this, but um, you know, there are other ways you can use these Hexplorer image tiles as well, not just Roll20, but I'm going to walk you through some of the basics um, for how to use them in Roll20. Um, as you can see, I have a new Roll20 game here that I made just for the purposes of this video. I've kind of been playing around with it a little bit to see what settings work the best and things like that, so I'll kind of walk you through all of that stuff. Okay, so first thing you want to keep in mind um, is that obviously when you download the tiles it will be a zip, a zip file so you'll have to unzip that and then the folder should contain all of the images the images are PNG files and they have transparent backgrounds so um, you should be able to stack the images next to each other without having um, you know without having any seams between them which is nice so the most straightforward way to use these tiles is to create large scale regional maps since you know what we have for the most part in this um, in this uh, kit <laughs> I guess image file kit <clears throat> is um, like wilderness and forests and things like that so I'm gonna walk you through that first the first thing you want to be aware of when you are going to make a map with these tiles is that if you try to use the default settings in Roll20 that has this grid pre-made on the canvas square, um, it's not going to work. Using the grid or using hexes will uh, distort the size of the images. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go up to this page toolbar, start a new page. I'm going to use this one that I have here that I made. Um, and then you're going to want to hit the settings, page settings right up here and make sure that you disable the grid. Um, now you can sort of see here that this is going to be where you come to resize your, um, you know, I guess I'll call it a background or a canvas, um, so that the tiles are the size that you want them to be relative to your map. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. But it's pretty simple. Once you've disabled the grid, hit OK. Uh, make that go away. And then what you're going to do is come up here to your um, art library and you can see I've already uploaded the tiles right here but you can just hit upload um, and then go to wherever you keep your files um, drag and drop the lot of them right here one thing to keep in mind um, with Roll20 I did try this so I, I do know that it works to do batch uploads rather than uploading one at a time by hitting, hitting choose file if you just select all of the images drag them here it will work it won't give you any kind of progress bar or any can, kind of indication that it's working which is too bad but if you just walk away for a few minutes and come back they should all be uploaded which is what I did so you can batch upload them which is nice and then basically you know all you have to do from here figure out the you know however zoomed in you want to be to do this um, if you're going to be making maps you want to make sure that you are on the map background level, not the objects and token level. So select maps and background. And then you just start placing your tiles. Um, now because we don't have a grid to work off of, you kind of have to line them up yourself. Um, and it looks kind of like this. So let's put a town right here. The town, I'll zoom it in a little bit. And then I'll put some grassland near it. Just kind of line those up. Some hills nearby. 
Um, and then maybe surrounding this little area is a bunch of florists. And you can put as many duplicates of these tiles on here as you want. So we've got a bunch of forests happening here. Um, and this is kind of just how you build, you know, build your map. You select the one that you want, click it, drag it, easy peasy. Um, now a few things to keep in mind when you're doing this um, is that the um, any of the tiles that have like borders or um, lines that have to line up with each other, so coastlines or rivers or anything like that, um, they should all be able to match up, but it's kind of tricky to get them to match up. I'll show you how to do it. So say for instance, I want this to be a coastline like coming this way or something like that. What I can do is if I want it to go right here, well actually that won't fit, hold on. If I want it to, sure, if I want this one, this one will automatically fit just like that. You can see it lines up. Um, this one should automatically fit as well. But if you ever encounter, like say I want this to, the coastline to turn a little bit here, I would find the one that says curve. And if it doesn't already fit, oh, that one does already fit. Let me find one that doesn't. Hold on. Um, let's try this one. So if I want this to go here, obviously it's not quite lined up the way I want it to. If I want to rotate, you can't just click and drag to rotate. You have to, at least on a Mac, I'm using a Mac, but hit down or push the letter E key and then scroll and it should rotate the thing. Now I'm using a trackpad, not a mouse, and my trackpad is super sensitive, so it's kind of hard to get it to land exactly where I want it to sometimes. See, I'm struggling. Oh, I almost had it. Almost. This is my least favorite part of this. Oh, that's the wrong way. Shoot. I mean, I hope you can see that when I get it to land in the right spot, it will fit. It's just a matter of getting it getting it to be where I want it to be. All right, I'm gonna pause the recording. I'm gonna, okay. Finally got it to spin to where I wanted it to. So you can see that it does line up. Um, and then you can keep building your, um, your coastline that way using these tiles. So that is the basics for creating your, your region, your, your general map, your large map. Um, let me show you one that I have already created just so you can sort of see I think it's this one. Yeah, this one. So you can see here, I've got, um, let's see, I've got my ocean set, high seas set down here, the coastline. This is some ocean ruins, I think. Oops, ocean ruins, um, a shipwreck, some islands. These are the desert ruin tiles. And then, come on. And then I have it transitioning here to the river, the bridge, these are the road tiles, the grassland tiles, the forest tiles, the brown hills tiles, and um, a farm. Got a little farm right there. So one thing that you might have already noticed um, that I will show you now is the scale. So by default, what roll 20 will do if you actually go to measure these it'll automatically make each one of these five feet, which is the standard grid. So if you were to measure them, the, you know, the default without changing any settings, it would be five feet from the center of one tile to the center of the next tile. I have changed it though, so that you can see, if you click here, snap to center, just for measurement, click on the center of the tile to the center of the next tile. Mine's at about 30 feet, you know. And the way that I changed that is, like I showed you before, up to the page toolbar, up to settings and I changed it here so instead of you know default would be five feet 
I've changed it to 15 feet um, so that, you know, this is 15, this is 15, so the space of the two of them would be 30. Um, you can sort of set it to whatever scale you want. Oops, let's see. You can set it to whatever scale you want in order to match, like say you have a farm here. Um, if I wanted to say that this building, you know, was only 10 feet, this is the scale that I would use. In, you know, in practice, I would probably make that building closer to 20, 30 feet, something like that. That, that would be huge, but, you know, farms can be big. Let's see, our ship is only 16 feet, so I probably want to make it a little bit bigger than that. Um, but for the purpose of using this as a party map, you know, to determine where your party is, in its general exploration of a, of a map, um, you would use it just like you would use any other Roll20 uh, background page. So make sure you're on objects, objects and tokens rather than maps and backgrounds. Input any of the characters you want to put onto your map. There's one. Um, and then if you do the select mode, um, you can scale it down. Oops, let's see, you can scale it down like that. And this could be just to keep track of where a party is. Obviously this is not great for actual battles. The one nice thing about this though is because we disabled the grid, every single character token doesn't have to be in its own space. You can just move them around kind of wherever, which is nice um, for, again, keeping track of where a party is geographically. Now obviously if you want to use these tiles for actual battle maps, the process is a little bit different, and I'll show you that now get rid of this. Um, I'm going to go back to the untitled square that I showed you before. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. Oh, I should mention this too. If you ever want to move multiples of these, if you're building a whole region, all you have to do is select them all and you can move them all together at once, which is nice. Now say for instance you wanted to have your party um, playing in a setting that was a little village or a little farm, something like that. This is obviously too small as is, so what you're going to want to do is zoom out, put this up here in the corner, and just enlarge it. Um, the images that we use are high resolution enough, enough that you can get it to a little bit larger than this and still have them be pretty clear, which is nice you have the option of doing something like this and then you know like I showed you before changing the scale so you can see let's see right now this house is about 20 feet across that's not bad um, it's not a bad scale you know this is about 30 feet but you could if you wanted to oops if you wanted to make it a little bit bigger just for the sake of easier play, so let's say 10 feet. Now this house is about 40 feet across. Um, if you zoom in, you know, it zoom in too far, it does start to get a little bit blurry, but the one nice thing about zooming in is that if you were to put your player, oops, I need to put that not here. I need to make sure to put that in the objects and tokens layer. If I were to put, where did she go? That player token in here, make it a little bit smaller. Um, you know, she can move around freely without being stuck um, to the grid, but I, I'm still able to measure, you know, how far this character is from the door of the building or something like that. So that's one thing you can do. Um, another thing you can do if you don't want it to be quite this zoomed in is make um, a map using just a few tiles. So back to the map and background, make this oh, make this smaller, and then you know say there's an army base nearby, something like that. The only thing that's a little bit difficult about this is that you have to scale them up and try to get them as close as possible to being the same size as each other, which sometimes can be tricky. But, you know, that's really the most finicky thing about it. And if you're a perfectionist like me, 
you know, you can work uh, as much or as, as little as you want to to do this, but you could always make a map that is, you know, a few tiles um, put together like this so that you have an entire little setting here to, to have your characters um, do battle or whatever they're going to do. Um, so, let's see, anything else to go over? I think those are really the basics. I mean, it really comes down to scale um, and then, you know, piecing them together the way that you want them and pre-thinking through your landscapes. But the other option you have with these is to put together just part of a map and then as your party goes exploring, you can actually, you know, live time while they're playing, um, go ahead, make sure you're in the map and background and constantly be adding new tiles to the map. So as they're exploring new territory, you can be adding it to the map, you know, right there during the during the game, which is really fun. So I hope this all made sense. Um, please let either Shane or I know, you know, if you um, have any questions about any of this stuff. Um, you can find me, well, you probably email Shane. Um, if you go to headlesshydropress.com, all of our contact information is there. If you are subscribed to the newsletter, you have access to our Discord server, and I am on the Discord server, so you can always tag me there, um, ask me a question on any of this stuff. But again, I'm assuming that most people who pledged at this level probably are familiar with Roll20, so um, yeah, I, I mean, this obviously was all the basic steps, but I would love to see maps that you guys create in Roll20. If you find a little bit more complex ways to use these tiles in Roll20, I would love to see those as well. Um, you know, and you can also just print off the tiles, use them um, physically, you know, if you are lucky enough to be able to have people playing with you physically, you know, when it's not a pandemic or whatever. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing what you create. And again, thank you so much for all of your support. Have fun playing.